So in this session, uh, we will discuss questions related to projectile. In the first question, in 15th century, an explanation of a projectile motion went as follows. That's, this is a statement from 15th century. Like when you throw an object, you give it force. We call, they call that as impetus. And it moves in a straight line. It is moving in a straight line until the impetus used up. So until the impetus used up, the object will fall vertically to the ground. So object will come to the ground once the impetus used up. This is the 15th century statement about the projectile motion. <clears throat> now in the question, they are saying correct the diagram to show the path followed by a projectile according to modern observation with the same initial direction. So. If we launch a projectile in the same initial direction, so what is the trajectory it will follow? It will follow a parabolic path. So when we represent this, it will be like this. Is it clear? The first part, the trajectory of an object which is following a projectile motion. The horizontal velocity is not affected by, as we assume, there is no air resistance affecting the motion. And the second one, acceleration is due to gravity, which is constant. Look, in this question, the first part they are saying this is a projectile motion which is represented in the 15th century. But correct the diagram to show the path followed by a projectile according to modern observation. So according to modern observation, if we launch a projectile with certain angle, so which path it will follow? It will follow a parabolic path, a parabolic curve will be there. That is followed by this object which undergo a projectile motion. Then the next part is saying explain why the projectile follow the path you have drawn. So the path which we have drawn we show that this projectile will follow a parabolic path. So why it will follow this parabolic curve or parabolic path? And you should include the reference of horizontal velocity. So why a projectile follow a path which we show? So first thing, <clears throat> We consider, we assume that air resistance is negligible. That's our first assumption. And what is the effect of this uh, air resistance being negligible? So the horizontal velocity remain constant. And the second thing, acceleration due to gravity is there. The vertical velocity, acceleration and deceleration are due to gravity. And the last part, the horizontal and vertical component are independent of each other. 
like the what is the horizontal component that does not have any effect on the vertical component and what is a vertical component that does not have any effect on the horizontal component so horizontal and vertical velocities are independent of each other or does not depends on each other is it clear this part In the next part, when a toy balloon is quickly hit up at an angle, like if you have a balloon, you hit with an angle, it appears to follow a similar path. Like if you have a balloon and we hit this balloon, what we see, what trajectory or what path it follows, the balloon follows a similar path, which is described in a 15th century, that first it will move and then at certain height after reaching a maximum height it will return back so balloon is a practical case because when we draw this path a projectile path we assume that there is no air resistance but in case of balloon which is a practical case so there will be an air resistance and when there is an air resistance the horizontal component is not constant so as the horizontal component is not constant what happens when it is moving forward the horizontal component is decreasing and eventually the horizontal component will be zero. Once the, there is no horizontal velocity, horizontal component of velocity is zero, then it will only accelerate due to gravity. That's why it will come down in this manner. And in ideal projectile, what we assume, we assume horizontal component does not change. So every point it is moving horizontally or it is having a component of horizontal motion this is ideal case but this is the practical case what happened practically is it clear so when we mention why a balloon follows the same path which is described in 15th century so what is the reason for that uh, air resistance is acting So if air resistance is acting on the object, the horizontal component is not constant. It will decrease. or decelerate at maximum height when it reaches the maximum height there is no horizontal component only vertical component So the balloon will fall vertically. Is it clear about the motion which is described in a 15th century about the balloon? So basically when this balloon is launched, it is having horizontal and vertical components, but horizontal component is continued to decrease and about vertical component is also decreasing because it is decelerating but when it is it reaches a maximum height only the gravity is acting and because of this gravity gravitational pull it will come down
The photograph shows a model of war wolf, a siege engine used in the 13th century. It is used to attack the castles by firing vessels from the sling. So basically, this is a sling. When it will move vertically, it will release this missile and that will hit the castle. So in the question, to operate this model, a coin is placed in the basket and a small projectile is placed in the sling. So we place the coin in the basket because basically what happened when we place an object here, this will move downward so that this will be released. The potential energy will change into kinetic energy. As this basket will come down, the sling will release this missile and it will have a kinetic energy. So potential energy or change in potential energy of the coin is equals to gain in kinetic energy of the sling or the missile. So first they're asking on one occasion, the mass of the coin placed in the basket is 0 0.41. The basket fall uh, through a vertical distance of seven centimeter. So it must be in meter. So 0 0.07 meter. Calculate the maximum amount of energy available to launch the projectile. So basically that's a potential energy, which is MGH. So mass of the coin that's given 0.41. Multiplied by gravity, that's 9.81. Multiplied by height in meters, so 0 0.07 meter. So this will give us the total energy, which will come out as 0 0.28 joules. The next part, <clears throat> an energy conversion calculation predict that the projectile speed is 16 meter per second. So this projectile is launched with a speed of 16 meter per second, the missile. And it observed to fly out from a sling at an angle of 40. So it's making an angle 40. So it's not exactly horizontal, it is coming out with a speed of 16 meter per second and making angle 40 degrees. Resolve the velocity into horizontal and vertical component. So how we can work out the horizontal and the vertical component. So we have the velocity given 16 meter per second making angle 40. So it will have two components, the component which is with an angle will be 16 cos 40 and the component which is against the angle that is 16 sine 40. So how we work out because we can see the horizontal component is 16 cos 40 and the vertical component is 16 sine 40 as we use a trigonometric ratio we can identify the horizontal and the vertical components here so 16 cos 40 that will be 12.3 meter per second and 16 sine 40 that is equals to 10.3 this will be equal to 10.3 meter per second. Twelve point three meter per second and ten point three meter per second. And how we worked out, we simply use a right angle triangle as it was this hypotenuse was sixteen, making an angle forty degree. And we need the horizontal and the vertical components. 
So the base, this one is a base. This one is perpendicular and we have hypotenuse. So if we need, if we use a trigonometric ratio, sine theta is equals to perpendicular over hypotenuse. So sine the theta is 40. Perpendicular, we don't know. That's unknown. And hypotenuse is 16. So 16 is multiplied. So we'll get the value of a perpendicular, which is 16 sine 40. That's why I wrote directly here that 16 sine 40. And when we use cosine theta, that is base divided by hypotenuse. So B, theta is 40, base is unknown, y, and hypotenuse is 16, so it will be multiplied. That's why it is 16 cos 40. Is it clear? So when the angle with horizontal is given, always the horizontal component is with cosine and the vertical component is with sine. Okay, the predicted range, predicted range here means the ideal case. This is ideally that this projectile when it is launched, it should travel 27 meters. That is ideal or scenario when there is no air resistance or the launching angle because when we have the maximum range when the angle is 45. If angle vary, the range will also vary with the angle. And in practical, what happened if we launch, it's only traveling eight meters. So what could be a possible reason? Air resistance and friction, they already mentioned that air resistance and friction in the machine are the responsible reason for the differences. Without further calculation, explain another reason why the projectile does not go as far as predicted. So air resistance and friction are the two reasons they already mentioned, but what, why other thing? Why it does not go out to the same range, where, which is predicted according to 27. So what could be a reason? Maybe not all of the potential, because what happened when we are adding a coin to a machine, when we add a coin, then it is launching a sling. So the potential energy is changing into kinetic energy. So, and you can see in the picture, this sling is attached with a cord, with a uh, rubber. These. So what might happen? Some of the energy might be stored in the string. So if some of the energy stored in the string as elastic strain energy, so what will happen, it will not read the same range because the kinetic energy transfer will not be same. So as we calculated in the previous part that when this coin is coming down, it is 0.28 joules of change in potential. So how much when it is a projectile is launched, the kinetic energy should be 0.28, but in practical it's not, it should be 0.28, but in practical it's not. Why? Because what happened, some of the energy stored in the string or not all of the potential energy converted into kinetic energy as some of the energy stored in the string. Is it clear? This part that why the range of this projectile is less than 27 meter, which was predicted. When a soft mint sweets are dropped into a bottle which contain containing a fizzy drink or a carbonated water, there's a sudden release of a gas which forces a long uh, stream of fluid out of the bottle. A student decided to calculate the amount of kinetic energy transferred to the fluid in this process. In one experiment, a student placed the bottle at an angle of 50 and adds the sweets that measure the maximum horizontal distance travel by the fluid. The student then calculated the fluid left in the bottle. The student then calculated that the uh, fluid left the bottle at a speed of 7.5, show that the initial horizontal. So how we can show that? 
7.5 meter per second is the speed at which the liquid is coming out from the fizzy drain and it was making angle 50. So how to get the horizontal component? The horizontal component is given by the cosine theta as the angle with horizontal is given. So horizontal component will be equal to 7.5 cos 50. So 7.5 cos 50, that will be equal to 4.8 meter per second. So this is equals to 4.8 meter per second. That's the speed at the horizontal speed of the fluid as it come out. Then the vertical component, how to get the vertical component? So that will be equal to 7.5 sine 50. So 7.5 sine 50 that's equal to 5.7 meter per second. So we got the horizontal which is 4.8 and we got the vertical which is 5.7. The next part use the value calculated for maximum horizontal uh, distance, assume that the fluid leaves the bottle at a ground level. So we have the horizontal component at which it is coming out. That was 4.8 meter per second. And we got the vertical component as well. Uh, from It's coming out as 5.7 meter per second. We need the horizontal so to get the horizontal distance, we need a horizontal component and horizontally there is no acceleration. So if there is no acceleration and we need a range here, so we have the formula speed is equals to distance or range here divided by time. So we have the horizontal speed, but we don't know the time, time, total time for the flight, total time it remain in here. So first what we do, we'll find the time to reach the maximum height. And then we will twice that time, so we, that will give us the total time. Now, how to get the time to reach the maximum height? So we have the vertical component. We have the vertical component, which is 5.7. And at the maximum height, the vertical component is zero. And because it will decelerate, so acceleration or deceleration will be Minus expression will be minus 9.8 meter per second square because the vertical component is decreasing. So we have initial velocity, we have final velocity, we have expression, so we can find the time to read the maximum height. So V is equals to U plus AT. And whenever you are solving by using an equation of motion, it should always be the vertical components place because horizontally there is no acceleration in the ideal case. So initial velocity is 5.7, the final velocity is 0, acceleration is due to gravity which is minus 9.8 and time is t. When we solve it will be minus 5.7 is equals to minus 9.8 and minus 5.7 divided by minus 9.8 that will give us the time to reach the maximum height. So it will be 0 0.58 seconds. So 0 0.58 second is just the time to reach the maximum height. So same time it will take to return from maximum height to the same ground level 0 0.58. So total time because when we are finding the range we need the total time. So total time will be equal to 0 0.58 multiplied by 2 that's equal to 1.16. So total time will be twice of the time to read the maximum height. So 2 into 0 0.58, 1.16 seconds. And now we need the maximum distance. So how we will calculate the maximum distance or the range, so range and speed multiplied by time. But the range depends on the horizontal component. 
So we need the horizontal component here. The horizontal component already we calculated in the previous part, which was 4.8. And the time 1.16. That's time. This T is the total time, not the time to reach the maximum height. This is the total time. So 4.8 multiplied by 1.16, that will give us 5.6 meter. So the maximum range by this projectile will be 5.6 meters. Is it clear this part? The next part, <clears throat> calculate the total amount of energy transferred to the fluid, the total mass of a bottle contained in the fluid before is 2.4 and after, is, so how much mass of the fluid is being transferred, that is M1 minus M2, that will give us how much liquid will come out from the bottle, so 2.24 minus 0 0.79 that will give us 1.45 kilogram that's a total mass and because we are finding a kinetic energy so for energy the total the speed the launching speed was 7.5 horizontal and vertical component of velocities are there but kinetic energy we use a speed here so which is half mv square so half the mass which is transferred that is 1.4 5 multiplied by the speed, launching speed, that's 7.5 and then the square. So this will give us about 40.8 joules. So this is the amount of energy which is transferred to this bottle, uh, transferred to the liquid. The next part, give a reason why your value of kinetic energy might be higher than the true value. So what we calculated, we calculated 40.8 joules. That's what we calculated. But maybe practically the kinetic energy which will come out, that will only be maybe 30 joules. So why our value might be higher than the other value? So what could be a reason why the value which we calculated, which is 40.8 might be higher Because we are calculating the kinetic energy by using half mv square. And our assumption is that like when the bottle, when the liquid is coming out from the bottle, When the liquid is coming out from the bottle, our assumption is all of the liquid reaches this point. But in practical, what might happen? Maybe not all of the liquid reaches the maximum. Some of the liquid fall in between the liquid particle. But our assumption that all of the mass is being transferred to the maximum distance, maximum horizontal distance. That's why it will not be. That's why our value is higher because we assume or our mass is higher as we assume that all of the mass transfer to the so not all of the mass transfer from the bottle to the maximum range. Is it clear the first part that because maybe what happens some of the liquid might 
not reach that maximum displacement horizontal displacement so that is why our answer is higher and then they are saying explain why your value of kinetic energy might be lower than the two value maybe what we calculated 40.8 but in practical it will be higher so how in practical it might be higher because when the liquid is coming out we assume that the liquid is coming out at a speed of 7.5 meter per second but what might happen the liquid is coming out at a higher speed maybe 15 or a higher speed but what happened when it reaches the bottleneck bottle opening because of the friction of the bottle and the between the bottle and the liquid that reduces the speed but in practical the liquid might come out at a higher speed so liquid is coming out a higher speed but we are only getting 7.5 that's why our value will be lower than the true value or we can also say the air resistance when we calculated the speed of the horizontal component or the we calculated the speed they, they ignore the air resistance but in practical there will be an air resistance is it clear the second part that the friction or air resistance might reduce the speed which cause a smaller value of a kinetic energy than the true value. In question 4, the photograph shows a sequence of the pictures of a man jumping from 30 meter, uh, jumping 30 meter from a cliff into a water below. Ignore the first picture, so ignore the first picture and consider the second picture as representing the instant he jumped. Ignore the final picture, the splashing, taking the 10th picture as shown. The diagram shows that the 10th picture of a man is it is useful to mark the center of a gravity of a man for each picture before taking the center measurement. It said what is meant by center of gravity and mark appropriate position. So what is the center of the gravity? Center of a gravity is a point where whole weight of an object at. So this will be the position where center of gravity will act on the person. The vertical distance between the consecutive picture increases but horizontal remain constant. Explain this observation. So what they, they said here that the vertical distance is con between the picture the vertical distance is increasing. Like first picture it is smaller then it is increasing you can see. So the vertical distance is increasing. But the horizontal distance remains same between the each picture. So what it shows about the projectile, as a, if you ignore the first, it's because it's not jumping in the first one. So all have the same horizontal displacement. So what is the reason? That's the same reason that horizontal component is constant. That's why horizontal distance is constant. But vertical, it is accelerating and that acceleration is due to gravity. Is it clear that why the horizontal distances are same and the vertical distance for each picture is increasing? By considering the vertical motion, uh, motion of a picture from 2 to 10, show that pictures are taken at a rate of 3 meter, uh, three per second. The vertical height fallen is 30 meter. 
so the vertical height which he fall that is equals to thirty meters. And we know that basically first we will find the time to fall this thirty meter. So we have the equation of the motion in which the initial velocity is zero because the initial vertical is zero. Vertically, initial is zero. Horizontal is there, but the vertical is zero, and the distance travel is three hundred, thirty meter. So we'll find the time. So we have the formula equation of motion s is equals to u t plus half a t square. If u is zero, so this will become s is equals to one by two g t square. S is a vertical distance which is thirty. One by two gravity is nine point eight, and time t square. So thirty multiplied by two divided by nine point eight in a root. What we'll get? We'll get a time. So it will take about two point four seven seconds to fall this thirty meter. And how many pictures are there? As you can see, there are eight pictures. We want to show that the pictures are taken at a rate of three pictures per second. They mention here that the word uh, by considering the vertical motion from two to ten, show that the pictures are taken at a rate of three per second. So how many pictures are there from two to ten? So there are because this is already there. Two is already there. So when we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so eight pictures are taken in this time interval. Two point four seven eight pictures are there. So time and pictures. So two point four seven seconds. There are eight pictures. So in one second, how many pictures are there? X cross multiply. So we will get this as eight divided by. 2.47 so this will approximately give us the number of the pictures taken per second which is about 3.2 pictures per second is it clear this part of the question So I'll share another link and continue this question. How it is eight? Look, you want the time. You got the time interval from the second picture to the tenth picture. So this is already there. This is a starting picture. Now the time interval start from here. This when it is two second means time is equals to zero, and when it is at the tenth picture, time is equals to two point four seven second. So how many pictures are taken from second picture to the tenth? So this is the first picture, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and 